your last video, people could say, well, you know, you're kind of borrowing a Tai Chi concept to do that, you know, for instance, by song relaxing the spine, sinking and, and expanding to, to send me out or releasing the pressure from my arms. Isn't that a sort of Tai Chi concept? No, yeah. it's, it's a Chinese martial art concept. So in, in all Chinese martial arts, you have standing exercises, you have stance exercises, you have uh, mobility exercises, you have, you have momentum exercises, you have applications. All Chinese martial arts have the full array of training. Weapons training often trains a lot of the, the, the tender strength and the physical power. So people talk about song, people talk about not using power, but they, they get very confused because they, they polarize the idea, right? The idea of standing exercises, Wing Chun's first form is what? It's a standing exercise. You know, we stand here, I do my form for half an hour, an hour. It's nice and slow with your breathing, all the internal training we practice. So that's, that's, your, that's your standing pole exercise, right? If you don't do that, you, you know people who don't do their sit and tower because when you touch hands with them, their legs feel weak, they've got no centre control. The whole point of form is learning to slowly link and delink your joints when you're doing the form. So when I sink and rise in my form, I'm feeling fractals of movement. So in Tai Chi, when they sink and rise and they move slowly, they're feeling fractal movements in their body. In Wing Chun, we're doing the same thing. If you do your form and you stand stiff and you're locked up and you're doing this, then of course you feel nothing because all you're doing is moving your hand up and down. But our form, we use the whole body, we rise, we sink. And we do this very slowly, we rise and we sink. We rise and we sink. There's a very small hidden skill within the body, so you feel the body is connected to every movement. And then you add that to Chi Sao, the reason we have that in the form is in Chi Sao, when someone presses you, if you're just using static movement and being very stiff, when they move you, you're gonna be stuck, right? If you have this slight give in your movement, and it's linking to linking your joints, then when someone presses you, you can feel their movement, you can release their movement, you can control it. If you push towards me, I can I can link, I can de-link, I can sink, right? I can rise. It's all inside the form. So in Chi Sao, we've already trained to understand the position, understand the link and de-link of the position, understand how you use all your joints, right? Tai Chi, tai Chi has big and small circles, it has linear tanks, same as Wing Chun. The emphasis is just the other way around. In Tai Chi, you'll see them hold, show big, big skill, and use bigger movement. In Wing Chun, we hide the movement and are a little bit more direct in our attack, but it's the same principles with a different engine. The Tai Chi engine is a bigger engine and has more throws and arm breaks in a lot of movements. Uh, Wing Chun, you know, we want to we want to attack and hit someone and injure them first before we start to throw them at them. So, you know, and you could you could interchange that as well. You could you could say Tai Chi can do that as well as you can. So the, the both Chinese martial arts they just have different ways of doing the same thing. Okay, so in Wing Chun, we, we use a lot of small movements, small circles, um, so it's harder to see. And that means that some people just do the movement without the body, and then that doesn't work, right? So you have to understand how to use the body. If you do the movement too big, and you do it in Chi Sao too big, you leave yourself wide open. So if we do Chi Sao, and we start doing all this, like we do in Tai Chi, yeah, you get hit, because it's too big, right? So even if you stick into somebody like this, and you're trying to get a balance, you're going away from striking. So we don't want to do that. What we want to do is we want to take their balance and control them, but we want to follow in the strike straight away. So we always focus on the strike to control the line of attack. Doesn't mean we're headhunting or, or we're just focused on hitting people, but, but we are. We're focused on controlling and hitting people. And if you push towards me, I can control the weight, push, push, push. I can retain my body, take your weight off me. I can sink and control you now, then I can strike. But if I did it like this, where I just put your hand to the side, you can delink, right? If I try to pull your hand down with no control, you can come out. So I have to have good control of my body to articulate my body in order to control your body. So if my form is dead, then my chi sao is dead, right? My, my form is alive, and when I turn and move and expand and contract, my form is alive, then my chi sao is alive. So our, our, our second form, when we turn, we sink and rise, expand and contract. So the second form is all about using left to right, up and down, okay? Forward and back, so you have all these different directions, and then you have to articulate all your movement within directions. If you don't do that, then you just really have basic trying to turn your, your body. But I'm trying to turn you and control you. So, to control you, I have to have very good control of my own body, a very good articulation of my joints in order to control your body. Otherwise, I'm using force against force. Right? So, in order to not use force against force, I need to have good movement in my body. So, when I feel pressure, I understand how to control that pressure. And push and how to release that pressure push how to control it push how to release it push how to control it push how to release it right and that's all done in, in real time so when a punch comes in i'm doing this you don't really see that because it's so quick right but you can feel it because you felt it but most people just feel they see it they can't they look at it 
just think I won the technique, but they can't see why. But really, we had about five battles. So when I said to some people, my guys are really good, you know, and they said, well, how come they can't hit you? I said, well, when we roll, maybe you see me get the hit, but we had five battles before that happened. So they had five battles that I had to get through before I got the hit. To me, that means that they've got a good level of skill, right? So if we're rolling, and I, you see people just see me do a lap style. So you just see me do a lap style? If they just see me do a lap style, they just see a lap style, and they think, oh yeah, I just, he didn't defend. But what I don't see is I took your balance, you adjusted, I pressed you, you adjusted, I pressed you, you adjusted, I pressed you, I pulled you, guided you, you adjusted, and then eventually I might strike you to stun you, or I might find your balance, and then I get the technique. But we did five or six battles before that happened. So even though I might get the end technique, you didn't really lose because you gain skill all the time. So obviously if two guys run a race, one person crosses first, so that's the guy who's the winner. People think that's the best guy, but the other guy was only a split second behind, he's still good, right? But you don't see that, right? So, you know, it's kind of people watching things and trying to always want to know who's better, who's the best, but it doesn't matter, you know, you're just training. This is not a fight. We're training Chi Sao, we're training sparring. It's not a fight, you know, you're training skills. So you should be able to train a beginner or an advanced person and improve yourself because you're both training the same raw skills and you're both trying to upskill each other, right? So we can be we can be doing cheese out and just working on our balance and just trying to find the center, find movement, trying to be relaxed. It doesn't really matter if we're striking, but if we're doing this and we're losing control of the center whilst we're doing it, then that's a problem. So whenever you're doing this and you're trying to control your center, you still gotta be focused where the strike is and still be focused that you could potentially strike or not, and potentially not get hit. If I try to guide someone and bring my hand too wide, he can strike me. So I have to guide him into me so he feels he can strike me, but he tries to strike, then I can sink, strike. He can't strike. So even though he feels he can hit my rib, he's, he's just close to it, but he can't strike. And he pushes this way, he can't strike. So I can pull him in this way, strike, but I can't do it like this where I'm not controlling him, right? I have to control his center, take his weight, and then I can strike him. So there's a lot of hidden skills of him we're doing. And I don't think the majority of people really see that because a lot of people are doing Wing Chun where they're just focused on um, the form, Chi Sao, and the Chi Sao is some, some absence of an application, but, which is correct in, in a simplistic way, but there's a lot more layers to how that works. And what I've been trying to do in all my courses is try to, like an onion, try to unpeel for people the layers within what we do, from long bridge to short bridge, to clinch to control, from drills to Chi Sao, from Chi Sao to fighting. We've got a lot of fight experience, so our guys have had a lot of fights, so you know, from that, that sport fighting and from, from all the competition, we've had a lot of um, trial and error, and we've also had a lot of success with what we do because we've been able to, to pressure test it. And, that's, and that, that makes a massive difference, I think.